Hello out there. Today I have something real rare to show you. That is well priced power hacksaw blades. Just kidding. What about these? A set of English made foundryman's shrink rules. I got something even better. You could say this is uh, not quite hen's teeth rare, but needle in a haystack rare. Mm. This is a uh, circa early to mid 1890s Crocker Wheeler Bipolar Dynamo Motor. So this thing comes right out of the days of the current wars, ACDC. Um, standard electricity at the time was direct current. That's what this little fella is. It's um, a quarter horsepower motor. But these DC units can, uh, if you supply electricity to them, they'll run as a motor. If you supply, uh, if, if you spin them, they'll generate current. So this would be classified as a basket case, this one here. And I bought it as such. The fellow that I purchased it from is a pretty hardcore collector of everything old. And he started, he started to kind of tie into it, but uh, lost interest or got onto other projects. Not entirely sure. Um, what can I say here? The plan is to do a resto on it, at least a functional resto. I'd love to put a pulley on something like this. This is just a governor pulley for, for looks. Put that guy there and belt it to the line shaft system and then have a little display of knob and tube and all the early cryptic electrical stuff. I think that would be a real treat. So most of it's here. Um, it's been bonked around a little bit over time, and, and uh, there are a couple things missing, but uh, we'll be able to manage. Uh, the armature is in the center. The, um, there are brushes that go in this dog bone holder here, one on each side, and this is adjustable. Um, these cores are made of iron. The base is... It's all cast, lots of brass bells and whistles on this thing. Keep in mind that this was the peak of technology at the era that it's from. And uh, they didn't go short on anything. There's So these are the bearings. They sit in their own little uh, races. And they're kind of like the line shaft bearings in that they have ring oilers. And the reservoirs in the bottom of the bearings here you have a cute little cap that you swivel, put oil in, and when, when it's drain time, there's a little knurled hand knob that's brass. So these things were high end. Um, another real treat with this is I happen to have the original book, Practical Management of Dynamos and Motors, Crocker and Wheeler, D. Van Nostrand Company. And you pop open to the cover, and we have a date of 1894. So the real treat with this is that a couple pages in the picture and explanation of everything. There's the armature on the 18th page. We have a complete exploded diagram of, of what we're looking at here. So this is a one horse in the picture. Uh, what's here on the table is a quarter horse. But this is of great benefit to the um, restoration project because all the, uh, although these things aren't unheard of, they're quite difficult to track down, especially for reference, that type of thing. So uh, the base has cast right into it CW number quarter. So Crocker Wheeler quarter horse. And the armature, the end, this whole face here is brass. It's all tarnished. But written right on it is Crocker Wheeler, and then patented November twenty, November twentieth of eighty eight, and a big number, and May fifth of ninety one. So you you know this is an, an early affair. Um, what else can I really say? Oh yes, the pièce de résistance. Is the original brass tag 
wasn't mounted on it. I don't know if I have the screws or not. I have to rummage through the bucket. But we have Crocker Wheeler Electric Company, New York, quarter horsepower patented May 5 of 91. Type quarter, S number 824, speed 1050 RPM, amp 2.2 volts 115. So this is before they had to specify AC or DC or phase number or whatever, because the standard was direct current. It was the current wars after all. This uh, The book is, is quite humorous, actually. It mentions quite a few times that um, AC motors are not commonly used as they are very difficult and uh, they are not in wide service. So 1894. It's quite a thing to think as well that there were more electric um, operations, electric motors uh, in service, in industry, all that type of thing, than there were gas engines or gasoline as we know it and even diesel engines. Sure, you had hot tubes and stuff coming about, but uh, this was still the steam era. So um, quite a thing. Peak peak of technology, absolutely amazing stuff. I'll, uh, I'll give you a zoom in here and then we'll go over the other parts. So here she is. Um, I mentioned that the fellow was kind of starting to tinker with this. Um, the armature, the coating on is just a cloth protective layer. It's really disintegrating hard. Um, and I do notice that it got a pretty good bonk at one point. Right, oh, right in the back here. One of these little ears is bent down. So uh, we risk that there's a short going on. I don't see any exposed frayed wires, which is good, of course, but still not the best. Also, there's rust on these screws and just the condition of this kind of implies that it was sitting in a rather damp place for a while. Not the best for electric motors, even modern modern ones, old ones the same. You might be able to see inside the frame there where it says CW number quarter. Uh, this thing here, the dog bone brush holder assembly unit thing, it is a new casting. Um, the fellow made two of them. There's just a screw in here and I'm not entirely sure what's going on because all the other references I've seen have a little handle, the adjusting handle in the end. So I don't know if there's a boss missing or if maybe the quarter horse had the adjusting handle here. I don't have that handle, but um, I found an old dental tool that will, it should look the same. So this is the other little pail of detritus that came with it. That's that dental handle I told you about. The profile is about the same, but uh, it's big. It's not quite proportional for this, but you make do with what you got. So probably use that. This big chunk of uh, brass is uh, something he was working on to start making one of the brush holder pieces. Uh, here's one. Here's the original brush holder. There should be a little set screw in here. And then your carbon is held there. This carbon is the right width, not the right thickness. So I'll have to plane that or something. And then these whole assemblies go inside, inside of there. Oops, there's the spare. Um, there's a lead. And they are insulated by mica. I guess you could call that a washer, micro, mica washers. And then there are other little, I think they're hard rubber or Bakelite inserts that go in here. These still need to be filed and tweaked, of course. Oh, this looks like a set screw. No, not quite. Anyway, there's a bin of little goods, goods and services here. There's some uh, roughed out parts. So if you compare that to the brush holder right there, there's the roughed one. Still needs some finishing. What's this I see? This looks like it could be. Yeah. There we go. There's a set screw to hold the brush. Uh, maybe, if we're lucky, this screw. Ah. Nameplate screws. That really ties the room together. Yeah, there we go. Do I get two? Yes. So. Obviously, I have to do lots of tests on this, continuity, all that type of thing. Um, see if there's any shorts, any fails, see how deeply we have to go into the coils. Hopefully, you don't have to do a rewinding job, but you never know. 
the whole base will get a paint job that should be a gloss black and then the brass is uh, reasonably polished um, big washers little pieces yeah so that's what we have to work with here now got lucky and also track down a cute little knife switch go in line with it and a matching crocker wheeler rheostat this thing's a beauty who knows the condition of the resistance coils they look fair normally uh oh well maybe i shouldn't say that so quick the uh, insulation is failing pretty hard so another unit to do lots of testing on these things would heat and uh often kind of go goofy on the inside so this could also be replaced with um like the face could be kept and then the guts could be swapped with modern resistors so we have lots to play with here so um you will receive updates as progress goes on as the tests occur i will be sure to show lots but uh, that's what i have for you at the moment so hope you enjoyed stay tuned and until then have a good one